Hey everyone, Pupsker here. This next Warframe update should hit in one week's time now, October 18th, and it's going to be pretty much the biggest quality of life rework update we've ever had with a ton of changes and it might confuse a ton of people going forward. Warframe has had a Abyss of the Goth news post going over, hey, quality of life updates, the general updates, some of the reworks, companions, Hydroid, Night Waves being easier, Grendel, etc, etc. So there's a lot of things going on in this update, and they had five workshops, we made videos going each and every one. So it's been a long general time of, hey, big update October 18th, but that was like three weeks ago. So let's have a little refresher, quickly go over each TLDR of every update with the intro just going over all of that, okay? It's not that bad. So, the Abyss of the Goth launching October 18th update. Reminder, if you like the video, subscribe, like the video, you know, we're trying to hit the high numbers, whatever that may be, and yeah, you know, thank you, thank you. The update 34 for Abyss of the Goth is coming October 18th, right? The TLDR is really nice with the new Warframe de Goth. The Goth is not going to be a quest Warframe, okay? It's gonna be the type of Warframe that you farm from an individual mission and then kind of hand in resources from that mission. It shouldn't be a hard farm by any means, but we'll have to see, right? The new blade and whip, we have a De goth alt helmet, Kaith cosmetics, nothing huge, dojo room, void shell skin for Protea, Mirage, and Nidus. I think as Protea is going to have Protea Prime in 2024, should be like the next uh, third up. I think, something like that. She's gonna be a very popular Prime Warframe when that time comes, I assume. Knights and Abris is already here, right? Glyphs, Sindanas, accessories, Lotus skin, quality of life reworks, Grendel Prime, right? Abyss of Dagoth on the 18th, the TLDR is, there's a lot of just general updated new stuff, and that is a good thing. We get regular skin updates and UI refreshes, so that's nice, but the TLDR for Abyss of Dagoth is QOL and reworks. I like that in the big summary of it. They put QOL and reworks at the very bottom, like it's not 90% of this whole update in everyone's mind, but yeah, there are general skins and everything, so you can't be too mad at that. The biggest rework is the companion rework, and that's only part one of companions. It's gonna be amazing, right? First round of changes, part two, that comes that touches some abilities, Smita. I think they're gonna try and nerf and buff all companions to finally be compatible, and usefully good amongst each other, because obviously now, companions can no longer die. That's the biggest improvement. Companions always sucked in higher level gameplay because they'd be dead 24 seven, and you couldn't revive them. At least if they'd revive, they could do some stuff here and there. And now a lot of their like buffs will work passively, right? New interactive mods that offer you ways to play alongside your companions. Changes to many companion mods, mostly to support the first two goals of removing death states and improving basic survivability. Yeah, they already talked about just mods and companions are going to be better and shown it off. We went over the dev workshop. like. When they die, a lot of their mods will still work, and you'll get, like, what, enemy sense, radar, things like that. They will just revive, and a ton of old mods that did revival states will now just essentially reduce the amount of time that your companions are downed on the ground. You can still revive a lot of them, like Kubros and Kavats, I think, so you don't even have to worry about that. Like, this new Abyss of Dagoth companion rework is beautiful. We're gonna have a good time, but we're also gonna have to change up every single one of our companions' builds to be a little better. And here's the thing, on stream, I think day one, we can probably knock out of the park every single one of our companion builds, because some of the companions we have, we just don't use that much, and other ones, we already have a build that'll work 90% of the time. You might just want to swap out a couple mods here and there, maybe get a couple of the new mods, it's gonna be hard to say, but all in all, like, even your old builds should work no problem and be very strong, so if you want to be lazy, you should have no problem sticking with all of your old builds and just playing with your companions, because after all, they're all not going to die, they are all going to revive, so it's going to be just a generally 
good thing for every single one of the companions. So overall, we're happy, it's not bad, and we can actually use the companions more often. So I mean, up, up, okay, this is a W, this update is good, we like it, even if it takes away some maybe like memory, smaller things along the way. Next thing we have is the entirety of the Hydroid rework. I'm gonna keep making little joke videos and general Hydroid videos because Oh boy, it's so fun, but Hydroid's essentially becoming good. He's becoming like a corrosive viral Warframe with like status reduction, damage increases, and just good abilities now. You won't have to charge his first ability. Yeah, so it's weird. Like they incorporated a lot of his just augment mods into his base kit. They're going to be changing around his augment mods. It's great, okay? Hydroid looks to be a fully functionally good, maybe high to mid tier character, who knows, right? Anything's good enough though, he'll be good now, right? His new update stuff is as follows, right? New passive, changing impact damage to corrosive damage and status, right? Like, yeah, great, corrosive, awesome, status, awesome. Removing charge mechanics, so you don't have to waste your time with that. Tempest Barrage deals corrosive and staggers enemies. Okay, good things, more corrosive. Tidal Surge can now be steered, so you don't just go in a straight line. Applies corrosive status and erases Hydroid's negative status effects. And finally, Undertow, his third ability, I believe, replaced with Plunder, applies corrosive and strips armor, increasing Hydroid's armor and weapon weapon damage. So Hydroid is essentially getting some survivability that he lost with the pub puddle, right? And then all of his other abilities are just getting corrosive and or some viral so that he can murder everyone. So he is becoming a water sarin? Uh, not obviously the same, but similar idea in that regard. He is now a toxic water frame. He is no longer happy water frame. He is toxic water frame. All in all though, the numbers will probably be pretty good. We don't know the exact numbers on a lot of things yet, and update numbers can always change, so we have to wait on that, but overall, it looks like Hydroid will be very strong, will be insanely useful, and you can splash them on any sort of team just to kill enemies now, so. It's possible that maybe survivability will be annoying because it's a, like, oh, only increasing his armor with his third ability, like weapon damage and armor is nice, but hey, maybe because it's only armor, he's still gonna have survival issues, but with new shield gating, we'll have to see, because new shield gating is an upgrade, so maybe he'll be better with just rolling guard and jumping into operator mode for fun, or just shield regen abilities, right? Maybe all of the new shield regen mods are gonna be insanely useful this coming update, so we'll have to wait and see, but yeah. Yeah. Daily reminder, if you want to ever support the channel, you can check out my second channel, Pupsker Genshin, as well as use Epic Games creator code Pupsker if you're ever using Fortnite, Epic Games Store for Warframe or anything along the lines of that, as well as check out any social medias. It always helps after all. So we have a lot of general Abyss of Degoth accessibility and HUD improvements this update with enemy and AI high or ally, I should say, highlighting system conservation improvements, auto melee, buffs and debuffs in pause menu, weapon traits, display and upgrades, and new update history page. Uh, it's more good quality of life UI and reworks, right? It's all just good stuff. Enemy and ally highlighting is useful for a lot of things, for people to actually see the enemies and allies. You can change them to any color, you can increase, decrease intensity, and then that means you can see where enemies are if you have a tr issue seeing. It's not usually a huge issue for me because you can just also use Warframe abilities to kill, but some people uh, have worse eyes and some people have worse monitors, etc. smaller monitors, and it's just harder to see, right? So it'll also help a ton for allies when you have Warframes that need to apply ally abilities like the ally highlighting system actually might be useful for more people because of how many abilities here and there you have to cast on an ally and you can't use it otherwise so you have to be like oh god where is my teammate it'll be a lot easier seeing like a glowing blue red orange whatever you color it ally floating around so it's actually really nice conservation improvements conservation will just be better and less painful which is nice because planes of idol on conservation can be a huge pain in the butt but it's getting better so yeah auto melee I don't know, I think they're still planning to ship that, but auto melee is working kind of goofily. 
I don't know if I'll use it, but I might end up using it. I think the idea is just hold E and you'll auto attack at your whatever designated attack speed and you can turn it on or off if you really want and then you can use heavy attacks separately, I think, but we'll have to see how it fully works and actually plays out. Buffs and debuffs in the pause menu is no matter what good because you can just see every type of buff and debuff in your pause menu finally. You just can't be mad at that. If you really want to min-max your stats and check out what every single stat is, it's great. Then you have weapon traits and upgrades and new update history screen, which pushes, of course, microtransactions a, t a ton, but you can always just not buy them. It's not a huge issue yet, but we'll see. And then the weapon dis trait display and upgrades is really nice. A lot of people never had any idea that weapons have certain individual traits and like specialties towards them. So it's just nice, okay? Warframe is a game that has a lot of information hidden in the background of it, right? It has a ton of stats, info, uh, hidden mechanics that you might not know of if you haven't read a certain screen or a certain uh, line of text on a weapon, right? A lot of people not, might not know if they're using the Gotva Prime because a lot of people got it, how the crit mechanic, red crit mechanic on it works, right? Nobody really knows, and it's not like the weapon says the specific percent, so Warframe as well as a game could be less vague and give us more info in a better way. So this is always good, always good giving us more info up front so we can actually make decisions and decide for ourselves. Lastly, right, we have the system changes and general quality of life. Oh, this stuff's so good. My life is complete. Even though this is a small Warframe update content wise, new content, it is huge rework quality of life content wise, as well as just new information. So we might just start redoing a bunch of builds on stream for Warframes individually, making videos for each Warframe and weapon, uh, each companion, changing around stuff. I don't know, I have all the time in the world to make random Warframe videos as long as people want to watch them. So if you want me to remake uh, Warframe builds for every Warframe, just general casual builds that I like playing, let me know because I don't upload a ton of build videos and I don't do like level 9999 content or anything like that. And I know a lot of people like that long high level content, but it's nothing I do. I just like making builds that I like playing in Steel Path, regular play, and just casually on every single mission, right? I am a generalist building player. Uh, person who just likes to play the game casually, right? Like with most people, I would assume. So the system buffs and changes are as follows. Focus lens conversion buff, shield gating and shield overhaul, break and armor, mission improvements, night wave changes, warframe level up stats, damage attenuation changes, steel path, circuit, riven rewards, and incarnate evolution swap. Oh, it's all stuff that we should have had a while ago. A good chunk of it, I should say. And then other things that's just like really nice, right? The focus lens conversion buff just essentially means you'll get more focus out of your focus lenses equipped in on Warframes, weapons, etc, etc, right? So it'll be less trash. You'll get better improvement rates and that means you can swap out and upgrade your other focus trees. I myself have played Warframe thousands of hours and I still don't have a ton of focus leveled up in anything other than like Xeneric, I think. So it's really annoying. Warframe has a lot of side systems which make the game easier, but it's also very annoying to level them all up unless you focus on it hardcore and I'm kind of lazy again if you really like Eidolon hunting it's not a huge issue comparatively to other things but yeah I'm not a massive Eidolon hunter only put in a hunt sand handful of hours I'd say yeah oh well that is what it is either way it's a great buff then we have shield gating and shield overhaul shield gating is just becoming better shield gating with dragon key though is becoming worse and just general Overall, Warframe shields are nicer and easier to use and stronger for pretty much everyone. So shields are better. Shields are an upgrade. This is a rework upgrade, right? Without a doubt, shields are just better. Like they're twice as good, essentially, in every aspect of the way, almost, right? They're just awesome comparatively to what they were before. So, moi. Love it. So, break and armor mission improvements. They're making the break and armor call missions a little less shitty. In they're adding, I think, like some weapons and pick up items where you can do some more damage, kill enemies easier, just you know, change things up and make it better. I'm not a huge break and armor guy. I kind of hate the call missions after the first couple of times because they're really slow. So they're like they're fun to run once or twice, but running them every week just to get a uh, 
Archon shards is not what I like. And I think you can also get some more points from the shop now, but maybe not. So who knows? Either way, breaking armor. Ooh, Nightwave changes. It'll just be easier. Nightwave will just be easier. You can level up your Nightwave battle pass faster. Uh, it's a better battle pass. Maybe they're make, uh, gonna make it like Fortnite and give you free currency for uh, platinum. Wee, wee, wee. No, they would never. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. You Remember, Epic Games creator code Pubsker. But yeah, they would never do that. Then we have damage attenuation changes and Warframe level up stats. So the Warframe level up stats is something that should have been changed ages ago, but it's like one of those changes that was probably a huge pain in the butt for them to change, so it makes sense why they wouldn't. It just means Warframe uh, mods and stats are gonna base off level 30 Warframes if they're level 30, instead of level zero Warframes even if they're level 30. So they're changing up mod numbers, they're changing up Warframe level and uh, balance numbers. I think overall, all things considered, Warframes, weapons, everything's tankier on your end, right? Your Warframes and your uh, weapons are a little nicer and a little tankier now. Well, not really your weapons, but everything on your side of Warframe is tankier now. So rejoice. Warframe level up stats won't make a huge difference at the end of it, but it'll be still a small upgrade. So all... All things considered, you're just tankier and stronger now, dudes. Att damage attenuation changes, though. This is the thing that kind of sucks. They're just trying to squish it in more and making it so it applies before, I think, it gets first attacked. They're trying to fix damage attenuation to be better and more of a damage attenuation properly, so you can't still, like, five-second kill, one-shot kill uh, Archons and stuff. So we'll see how it ends up working. We'll do some Archons when the update hits and some other content after we farm up your girl, the goth, but... Who really knows? And lastly, we have the Steel Path Circuit Riven Rewards and Incarnate Evolution Swamp. And those are just nice little changes where we can finally get some Rivens on the Steel Path uh, Circuit if we so choose. If you don't want the Warframe drop or like already have the Warframe or already have the Incarnate, right? That's the thing. If you already have the Incarnate weapon, you can now just get Riven. So I mean like, yeah, cool if you don't want the Incarnate, but yeah, it's not huge. And then we just have Incarnate Evolution Swap, which this is one of those things that should have been put in the game when the Incarnate system dropped. But now it's actually here, which just means we can swap out the Incarnate buffs without going to Cavalero. Once we unlock it, just, you know, you can swap it out in your, like, equipment page, I believe. So, uh, uh I mean, mod loadout equipment page. Uh, yeah, you know, whatever you want to call that. Foundry. Arsenal. So, yeah. That is the generals of this update, and it looks so good. I just wanted to talk about it again so people remember. One more week until the update, you know, let me know what you think. Check out all of my other videos. It's been a casual time, but maybe I should get to making some more Warframe beginner guides, guides, etc., and so forth. So, yeah, either way, thank you all for watching, subbing, liking, and I will see you another time. Cheers.